Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Jimmy and welcome to my new video. Uh, so in this tutorial, what I'm going to be going over is adding some motion blur to your photos in Adobe Photoshop. Uh, so I recently posted this photo on my personal Facebook page and a few people liked it. And then I posted the alternative, which was this one on my Facebook photography page. And I got a few people asking how I added the blur, was it Photoshop, was it something else, and if I'd be making a tutorial. Uh, now the blur that you see here was actually created in a program called Virtual Rig. Now since this is a really expensive program and not many people will have access to it, so what I tried to do was recreate it just using Photoshop and this is what I came up with. Uh, so it doesn't look as good, you can see it doesn't have as much blur but that's easily fixable. Um, the same kind of effect is there but the main thing Photoshop lacks is being able to curve the blur like you can something like Virtual Rig. Uh, so this is what I'll be going over in this tutorial and hopefully you guys enjoy. Uh, so what we're going to do is just grab our original here and get started. So I'm just going to rename this one background and uh, let's jump right into it. So the first thing that we need to do is duplicate our background layer by pressing Ctrl J. Uh, so now that we've done that we want to double click on the name and rename this one Motion Blur 1. So since we've got a few different directions here, we've got the straight one, we've got this curve going here, we need to create two different Motion Blur layers and then kind of blend them together. Now this tutorial won't work if you kind of have a really curvy road, uh, it's only really going to work for something kind of straight like this. If you want to be able to add blur to curved roads, you're going to have to get something like Virtual Rig. Um, so now that we've done that, what I'm going to do is go up to Filter and make sure that Convert for Smart Filters is fixed. And what that's going to allow us to do is edit our filter values at any time. So now that we've done that, we want to go down to Blur and go down to Motion Blur. So the first thing we want to do is bring up our distance a little bit just so it helps us see which angle the blur is actually going in. And then from there we're going to tweak the angle and get it going with the direction of the road. Uh, so for me, about negative 24 to about negative 25 uh, seems pretty good. Okay, so I'm happy with that and we're just going to bring the distance down to about 45 pixels. Now this can be as blurry as you want, however just keep in mind you can see this little ghosting effect happening here from where the blur is leaving parts of the car. Now the further distance that you blur this, the harder that is going to fix up at a later point. Uh, so I'd highly encourage you to just add a small amount of blur and keep it at all you need. And now that that's done we're going to click OK. So now what I want to do is duplicate this layer again by pressing Ctrl J, but this time we're duplicating our motion blur layer. Now I'm just going to call this Motion Blur 2 and we want to double click on the Motion Blur name here and this is why we convert it for Smart Filters since we can just go back in here and edit the angle instead of coming up with everything again. So this time we're going to try and get the angle for this part here. Now of course this is going to vary depending on your photo uh, but for me that seems pretty good right there. Okay so now that we've done that we want to create a mask on our top layer. Now the reason for this is so we can blend these two together. Since you can see that this blur is going that way and that's the majority of the photo and this blur is just going this way and that's only the small section here, we're just going to mask this out. So to create a mask we're going to click down here and make sure our motion blur 2 layer is selected, grab our brush tool, make sure our primary color is black and make our brush nice and big and hardness 0%. So from there we're going to hold the alt key and press backspace and now you can see it pretty much makes it look like that layer is totally invisible. And then we're going to change our primary color to white by clicking this arrow here or pressing X on our keyboard. Bring up our size a little bit more and just paint in where we want this second blur. So just down here for example. Bring up our opacity to 100% sorry. And that's looking fairly good right there. So it doesn't really look like it's blended too well. You can see we've got the two different blurs kind of crossing over at this point here. So what we're going to do to try and fix that is just bring our opacity down to about 50%. Bring down our brush size a little bit. Make our primary color black again. And just kind of start painting this in a little bit here, being a bit more careful. And trying to blend these together to the best of our ability in Photoshop. Uh, so for me that is looking fairly good right there. So quickly taking a look at what we just did. If we have a look at the original here, we added in this first direction of motion blur and then added in this second direction here, which is just affecting this area here uh, because we've got our layer mask. Okay, so what we want to do now is make it look like our car isn't blurred. So to do this, we're going to duplicate our background layer once again, drag that one to the top and call this one car. Then we want to go down and make another layer mask on this layer. Make sure black is our primary color once again. 
hold alt and press backspace and that's going to create the mask on that layer as well. So now from there what we're going to do is just paint over the car in white making sure our opacity is again at 100. Uh, so this is pretty much going to cut the car out of this layer and then we're going to go through and just clean it up using some smaller brushes. So you want to make sure that you go over the entire car, you don't want small blurred spots, you know, somewhere random, because if someone picks up on that, it's going to be kind of embarrassing, and it's going to make your effect look really flawed. Uh, so to make sure that you have covered the entire car, you can hold control and click your mask, and you can see that we've gone around the entire car, but you can hold alt and click it and make sure everything is filled in white. Okay, so what we're going to do now is also with white still as our primary color, we're going to go up onto these walls here, and just completely get rid of the blur on this tree and in the distance there since the blur wouldn't really be affecting something that far away. Now if you're unsure as how to blur something like this probably isn't too correct, the best thing to do would be look up a rig shot of something in a similar environment and that's going to kind of give you an idea of what should be blurred and what shouldn't. Uh, so what we're going to do now is make black our primary color. Still on our car layer we're just going to paint the blur back in and be a bit more careful this time, we're going to go right under the car here and go over this a bit more carefully and thankfully this wall behind is pretty much one color and the blur is not too noticeable on it anyway so it makes blending it together a little bit easier on this particular photo and you can go under here, be a bit more precise with an even smaller brush and this is all starting to kind of come together. Blow that. And then we're going to change back to white and just fade this out uh, so it's nice and gradual like so. Okay, so, so far so good. What we're going to move on to now is blurring the wheels. Now depending on what angle your photo is taken at will determine what kind of blur that you need to use. Um, so I'll explain that in just a moment, but first we need to kind of single out the wheels here. So for this we're going to go back to our background layer, and you can use any tool for this. You can use the lasso tool, you can use a marquee tool, the pen tool, whatever. And you just pretty much want to cut out just the wheel here. And that's looking fairly good. So now with that done we're going to press Control J on our keyboard, and if you don't know what Control J does, is it pretty much just adds the selection to a new layer. So now I'm going to bring that layer to the top and just call this one wheel. So now I'm going to repeat the process for the front wheel here. And just again, trace around that nice and quickly. Control J, bring it to the top, and call this one wheel two. So what we need to do now is go up to filter, convert for smart filters. And you can see now that is a smart filter layer. And again, for the other one, go into filter again, go blur, and as I said before, depending on the angle of your photo, you might need to use a different filter. So say if your photo is side on, you might want to go for something like a radial blur where you can simulate that kind of circular motion of it moving. But for me, since you can't really see the wheel at all, what I found worked best was just motion blur again. And we want to make sure that this is at a 90 degree angle. And then we want to bring the distance right down. And you can see that kind of makes it look like it's spinning uh, without having that kind of circular motion. Uh, so what we're going to do now is repeat the process for the front wheel. Go blur, motion blur, and this one needs to be blurred slightly less. And that's looking fairly good right there. Then what you can go ahead and do is just play around the opacity if you want, if you're not completely happy with it. And I think that's looking fairly good so far. So again, going back down to our background layer, we're going to cut out the tire this time and add a bit of blur to that. Uh, so, of course, be a bit more careful than I am. The pen tool is probably a better job for this uh, kind of work here. And once we've got that done, you can hold shift and trace around this wheel as well. And even the front one here. And there we go. So now with all three of our tires selected, pressing Control J, and we'll just call this one tires and we're going to add motion blur to these ones as well since we want it to look like they're spinning. So now I'm going to go down to blur, motion blur, uh, convert for smart filters again if you want. 
and then I'm going to bring up the distance quite a bit for this one and maybe bring the angle in just a little bit and there we go so now it looks like the tires are spinning uh, so now that we've done that the last thing I did was add in some elements I added in some dust I added in some dirt and rocks flicking up and I'm just going to drag that all in on one layer here uh, so you can see here it is all here and for this I just used some pre-keyed elements from Action Essentials 2 for Adobe After Effects uh, but don't worry if you don't have any of that I will include a download file in the description with a few little rocks and stuff that you can play around with and some dust uh, so that is just for you guys and that way you can kind of come up with these effects yourself so just going over what I added you can see there's some rocks flicking up there's some dust coming out from under the wheels there there's a big dust cloud coming through the entire front here Okay, so that is pretty much it for this video. I hope this helped you guys out. One more thing I didn't mention was make sure that you blur the reflections on your car as well. Otherwise, if you've got something really blurred over here and it's perfectly still on your car, that's going to look a little bit strange. Um, but one last look at what we did. We went from this and created this. Uh, so there is a little bit of difference. It does create that kind of sense of motion. And I hope this helped you guys out and you found it interesting. So if it did, be sure to hit that like button to help my channel out. Uh, comment and favorite if you'd like and yeah if you'd like to see more of my work you can check out my facebook page and deviantart with the links in the description otherwise i will see you guys in the next video goodbye